Hello there, everyone. My name is Dr. Richard Byrne, and welcome to my talk today on design and digital vertigo experiences. Before I introduce you to our digital vertigo experience framework, I thought it'd be good to first show you some of the experiences that we developed that help us derive the framework. We'll start with Balance Ninja. Vertigo has been described in game design as games that attempt to momentarily destroy the stability of perception and inflict a kind of voluptuous panic, or pleasurable panic, upon an otherwise lucid mind. So, for example, Vertigo games could include simply spinning in circles, skiing, racing fast cars, and even rock climbing. With our work, we investigate how we can design digital Vertigo games by taking advantage of the digital technology now available to us. To investigate this, we built Balance Ninja. Balance Ninja is a two-player balance game where players directly affect the balance of their opposing player. Firstly, players stand on a balance board and move their upper body to the left and to the right, and we measure this lean with a mobile device. Secondly, through using a technology called Galvanic Vestibular Stimulation, or GVS for short, the game directly affects a player's sense of balance. With GVS, a small current of around 1.5 milliamps is applied to electrodes attached behind players' ears. The resultant effect is that the player's sense of balance is affected in the direction of the positive electrode, causing them to lean in that direction. So basically, when one person leans to the right, the GVS of the opposing player triggers in that same direction which makes the other player lean and attempt to compensate. The object and challenge of Balance Ninja is to cause the opposing player to touch their ball to the floor whilst trying to remain balanced themselves. Points are scored by getting the other player to touch their board down and the first player to five points wins. And so in addition to GVS, we also tried out some other digital stimulation technologies like head mount displays. Have a look at AR Fighter. AR Fighter is a two player game where players battle against sensory conflict through the use of head mounted displays, or HMDs for short, in order to score points against the opposing player. We create sensory conflict in AR Fighter in two ways. One, players stand on one leg and move their head and body in different directions, and this movement is recorded by the HMDs. Two, the view of each HMD responds to the movements of the opposing player creating a conflict between a player's visual perception and their bodily sense of balance. The adjustment in players' visual perception causes players to feel as though they are actually off balance, and they start leaning to compensate. Through compensating, players move their heads, and therefore the opposing player's screen is tilted even further. The resultant effect is that a player finds it difficult to control their own balance, whilst also trying to affect the other player's sense of balance. The objective of AR Fighter is to cause the opposing player to place their raised foot back to the floor whilst maintaining and battling one's own sense of balance. Points are scored by getting the other player to place their foot down and the first player to five points wins. So evaluating those two systems and a few more in between helped us derive the digital vertigo experience framework that you see on the screen right now. On the x-axis there is the extent of facilitated sensory confusion, how much digital technology uh, is affecting the player. Well, on the y-axis is the amount of surrendered bodily agency. Players need to be willing to surrender some agency to experience these vertigo experiences, uh, whether that be, as we saw in Balance Ninja, standing on a balance board or simply standing on one leg. What this leads to is four different quadrants and four different types of user experience, depending on how much agency is removed or returned to the player, or how much facilitated sensory confusion is applied to or, again, removed from the player. And that allows designers a really unique opportunity to actually move through this design space and create experiences that are, for example, more predictable, more daring, more overwhelming, or more disconcerting. But of course, we want the experience to be fun. So although you can move between the different quadrants, we recommend that designers avoid the extremes of each axis to make sure that uh, players don't experience these various risks that we've also highlighted on screen. So for example, if too much agency is removed, there's a chance of physical injury. So always allow players to recover. And to help highlight how the framework could be used in the future, we've mapped some various related works and known vertigo experiences like roller coasters, orbing, etc., on the image there on the left. And on the right, we've mapped our own experiences. And you'll see that some appear several times, and that's because those games and experiences actually move within the space. Balance Ninja itself, for example, in the center there, moves through various different quadrants throughout the different stages of gameplay. And there you go, that was a very whirlwind introduction to the world of design and digital vertigo experiences. As always, there's far more information in the journal article itself, including various design tactics and guidelines for designers of these experiences uh, to draw from. If anyone has any questions beyond today's session, please do get in touch on the email address below or the Twitter handle. And other than that, please enjoy the rest of the conference. Take care and thank you for listening.